if you clicked on this, uh, I thank you because you're about to listen to me rant and rave about something that doesn't really matter, again, to anyone but me. But I have to get this off my chest because it's giving me a headache. Alright, so. I'm currently planning a Soul Eater post for Halloween. And the point of this video is to say that I fucking bemoan the time period before before the internet. Like, I hate that we live in a universe that the internet is just not an automatic given in every time period, in every way, and it really gives me a headache. <sighs> because, due to the nature of my personality, I can never... I can never find peace in relying solely on, like, my own subjective feelings and, and like, instincts, besides, well, people. But I had to, I had to train that up. But the thing is, my need is constantly for evidence. If I'm making a point, I cannot rely solely on subjective feelings. Even though that may be a powerful argument to some, I do not feel comfortable with it. We'll get back to this page, this page in a minute here. But, uh, okay, so... You remember that time when I, I, lay, I laid out a bunch of books on my floor with pens and, with pens and coins? And, like, yeah, yeah, we're doing that thing again. Okay. On... Yeah, it comes down here. On this side, we have effectively five incredibly influential and foundational texts. We have everything Lovecraft ever wrote, which is the all his complete fictions. We have uh, Natsumi Soseki's Kokoro, which is an, which is another uh, foundational text in Japanese literature. Still haven't read that one, and is only here to prove a point. But um. We have No Longer Human, written by Osama Dazai, the second best book ever um, to be sold, like, like second best selling, second most popular book to be sold right after Kokoro. We have Franz Kafka, obviously a very influential figure, and here we have Dostoyevsky. Now, if you don't know about Dostoyevsky, because he's a bit more obscure than the last four names I just mentioned, Dostoyevsky's Crime and Punishment, and basically like everything else you're in. He wrote books, like he was Russian, he wrote books back in, no, not 19, 1880, 1880s, 1880s. So he does precede literally everybody here. I mean, I know this for a fact. When it comes to talking about authors and influence, it's a very, it is a landmine of issues. On the, on the other side, on my other half, this Hunter x Hunter Dick Rang Association, he is busy currently trying to um, create a well, philosophy pose for all of Togashi's work. That's in the work right now, and he's working on that. But for me, I'm currently working on a Soul Leader video, and I want to make the point that basically the origins of all edgy anime, so over here we have... Um, Line. Again, new series in here just because Edge. We have a book here by, called uh, Evil in a Mask by Fuminori Nakamura. And we have Soul Eater. Now, I'm basically make, I'm going to be making the point that almost all of the Edge in anime, and you could almost, some people I suppose would argue, like, almost all Edge in just, I guess, fucking literature in general, originates back to... Foyor Dostoyevsky. Apparently, if you say if you say the, like the name Toy in the middle, his name becomes much more pronounceable. Uh, but moving on. Now, if you see if you see these uh, these coins I have here, I have I have we're going to be focusing on Soul Eater. I have coins linking Soul Eater to Lovecraft, Dostoyevsky directly. I don't have one linking it to No Longer Human. But for, but for Nakamura, I have the direct link from No Longer Human to, do, to uh, Crime and Punishment. And I have the direct link for um, him to Metamorphosis. Which is, uh, well, all of Kafka's words anyway. These two up here are outliers. Because when I was researching, I could not find them giving names of who influenced them. Now... It is no exception, I mean, I mean, it's nothing crazy to say that everything has an origin and that everything takes some, some sort of influence from, from everything else. That's an obvious statement that we don't need to cover. But the issue is 
we're living in an age where the internet is just not a taken and we didn't always have it is that we don't know particularly what influence what because no one was going around to all these authors and interviewing them and saying hey who did you like to read because like in particular like franz kafka like uh, i believe osama does i got an interview got an interview with um and we, we know some of his influences. That's why, like, I, I, I can directly prove that uh, Dazai has read Dostoevsky because that's on his fucking Wikipedia page. But as far as fucking Kafka goes, right, uh, there's no direct... Because, like, he, he was only famous after he died for whenever, I assume, of depression or some shit. And there's no direct link to him and crime punishment so this is technically just sort of a fabrication however if we come over here this is this is kafka's wikipedia page and it's, it's just going to the uh the critical fucking get off my fucking screen that fucking damn you uh the critical interpretations of his work and if you come down here uh, we see words like entusiasm. This is actually Dostoevsky right here, which is a big, big part of his work. Um, we have people talking, about, we have people talking about the Marxists and how um, they disagree about the Kafka, the, the uh, interpretations of Kafka's work because some pe some people say him of distorting reality, whereas some Marxists will more claim he was critiquing capitalism. I I lean towards the latter of him critiquing capitalism because it's pretty obvious that's what he's doing. Uh, but it's hard to tell, so. And then right around here, Dostoyevsky's name shows up. And this this is like this is like other majors talking about Dostoyevsky right here. And it said the writer, um Milin Kundra suggests that his, his basically surrealist humor was sort of an inversion of Dostoevsky, who are punished for crime and blah, 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 and da, 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 basically. So yeah, so basically, what I'm saying is that like, if I, if I was the type of person who could just lean on sort of background knowledge, feelings, and, and interpretations and subjectivity, I could make this connection as that last person did that Kafka more than likely read Dostoevsky and and was taking some sort of influence to his work. And you know what? That's not even that big of a stretch because you want to know why? Kafka was like in the 1920s when when fuck when capitalism was fucking up Russia. Dostoevsky was in fucking the 1880s. That's not it's and his work his work is this this book in particular is considered the uh, the first piece of existential literature. I got this is so old and like it's in so good condition. I got this for six bucks. I used the coupon to get it for fucking free. Now what's the issue here? No one actually interviewed him. See, see this, see this, see Fumanori Nakamura. I found an interview of him admit, admitting his uh, various, what's the word? Um, oh yeah, influencers. So I know that he, I know that for a fact he has read Osamu Dazai because it's literally one of the most popular books in all of Japan and foundation and a foundational text. I know that he's read Kafka. I know that he's read Dostoevsky. In fact, Dostoevsky is Nakamura's favorite author. I know that he's also read Camus. And by the way, Camus is also someone who comes up when talking about Kafka. Now, as far as Solider goes to sort of bring this back to base, I know for a fact that so that uh, the author of Soul Eater has read um, H.P. Lovecraft, because if you've read Soul Eater, Soul Eater manga, gone to the Avon arc, you've literally seen fucking Cthulhu in this manga. I'm not kidding. He actually shoves Cthulhu in here. And then, thanks to an incredibly, incredibly small reference that I was able to look up in the back of the translator notes of the of the uh, um, of the Soul Eater manga. I um, at one point in the Soul Eater manga, when when it, during that I think it's the clown arc, 
Liz, you know, one of the girls who turns into a gun, she makes a very, very tiny reference to one of Dostoevsky's famous works. Like, not this one, but it's a different one. So I know for a fact that he's read Dostoevsky. And that's sort of the, and that's sort of the point. Because I have read all these authors, and, well, except for Kokoro so far, so let's just scoot this motherfucker out the way. But because I have, so because I have read all of these authors, I understand their edge, their themes, and sort of, sort of the, the same template that they're working for. But because no one has interviewed him or him, I can't make every connection. I don't even know if, if the author of Soul Eater has read No Longer Human. It's more likely that he's read No Longer Human than he's read fucking Dota Vesky, but I can't fucking prove that. No one has interviewed him. There's no other references to fucking Osamu Dazai in any of the book. I know that he's written an eight-day card because of that one sculpture. And so what I have to do now is that when you're researching this thing and you need these sort of evidence, I have to gather things like, like, like opinions from other literary critics, like I did on the fucking on that. I have to gather opinions like the reason I know that Coco, well, one of the reasons anyway, one of the reasons I know that Kokoro, No Longer Human, and um, Rashomon are incredibly foundational sections to paint is because I actually had to ask someone that. Like, what are the foundations of the man who lives in Japan and he sees their influence everywhere? I can even make I can even make the connection the second hand that a lot of people Ava fans I haven't fucking watched Ava because it's shit and I don't care about it, but I can make that connection because I've seen Ava fans or rather I've seen a friend, seen friends make the connection between Dostoevsky and Evangelion. And again, if Dostoevsky is the be beginning point of existentialism, that makes sense. No one's off to interview these people. I looked up interviews of, for, uh, for Hideaki Yano, even though I don't give a shit about him to sort of prove this point. And I can't find anything. And the only, and the only reason I need, to make, I need these connections is to, just to make this point that so, is that Soul Eater's themes do revolve a lot around um, a lot around authority and fucking all this other shit for the video it's not even a major point it's not even a major point it's just that like i know i know what i'm doing i've experienced all of this and i can tell very very distinctly that is all very similar but again because we don't live in an age where everyone was interviewed we now have all the information available i just have to sort of rely on secondhand testimonies and all this kind of shit just to make this point it's, just, it's, it's ridiculous i fucking hate this I hate this. Why do I do this to myself? Every fucking time. <sighs> I wonder if you guys can hear the person downstairs yelling just... <laughs> I don't know what the fuck he's yelling at. Probably some normie shit. <sighs> and you know, the worst thing is, is that like... I'm torturing myself literally over nothing, as I said at the beginning of this video. Because Osama Dazai is no longer human is the second most like read book in Japan. It's still it's still a chart topper even to this day because apparently Japanese has not learned the Japanese have not learned the lesson that fucking capitalism is bad. Like Jesus Christ, I don't even I, I don't even need the Osamu da, the Osamu Dazai connection. I have the direct line from Soul Leader to Dostoevsky. It, it it's just. Ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. But having all these stories in does strengthen my point. I've made the research, but it's just a fucking nightmare because the internet was not around from the beginning. <sighs> so yeah, um, that's about it. I have a whole bunch of things planned for this month. Uh, the, the masculinity post, like the, the practice of masculinity, That'll be out whenever I get around to editing it. Uh, a trope talk is coming out. The solar video is going to be at the end. Solar video slash post is going to be out at the end of the month. Um, and I'll more than likely be appearing on pop on not pop on Craft Wars podcast for Kingdom to join him for like the next couple arcs. So um, go sub to Ember Reviews. And I will see you guys around Halloween time once I get all this fucking shit done. Goodbye.